Howdy friends, this is Lance. I've been exploring a lot of different ways that Google Sites could be used to deliver quality digital instruction. And there's lots of avenues out there. I tend to like Google Sites just because there's so much you can do with it and it's easy to organize and you can create multiple pages. So in this, the question is, how do you make it more interactive? And I've been working on some different ways that get, that can be done. One of those examples could be a tool like Bluekit. So this video is about how do you make it so that way you include some content and you make your Google site a little more interactive like this. So this is actually set up with a blue kit directly in the Google site. So that way, yeah, they take in the information regarding these different pieces or different content pieces that the teacher has placed in there. And then they can play the game directly in here and they don't ever have to leave your site. And so since they don't have to leave your site, then they can just keep working directly in here on your Google site without ever having to visit the blue kit website. And so how do I do that? I'm gonna go into those steps. It's not very hard to do with Bluekit. They make it pretty simple. On bluekit.com, I created some games. I have one here that matches the page that I wanna use. And all I do is I use a solo game and then I take this link for the solo game and I go to my Google site. I decide where I wanna place it. I already have one there, but I'll go ahead and put it in here. You can put this in a couple of different ways. You can use the embed option here, or you can double click where you wanna place it and choose the embed icon here. And with Bluekit, they make it real simple. You can just paste the link directly in. There's no need to work an embed code in there, which is pretty fantastic. So I select whole page, insert, and it pops it in. Let me slide this over and resize it a little bit. So that way it's not taking up too much space. You do wanna consider that. You wanna play around with it a little bit because if it is too big, then what ends up happening is the students struggle with screen size and whether or not they can work within that game, within that page without doing a whole bunch of scrolling. If you wanna add additional text, you can double click, add your T, add some information. And if you want to format that text, you can change the formatting of the text, enter down to give more information. And then you can take a look at what your site looks like. So I'll hit the preview button and scroll down. It'll eventually load. It loads a little slow because it has to pull in all that information. And then the students are able to play directly in that box. Again, you want to test it on a student device and make sure that your student screens will match up and work within the confines of the size that you shrunk it down to. One thing with Google Sites that you'll want to remember is that you do need to hit the publish button in order for your students to participate. If you want to send them directly to that page, a nice convenient way that you can do that is hit the link icon here and copy that link and you could send it off to them, whether it is through Google Classroom or your learning management system, however you want to communicate that that's the website that they need to use. So that way, when they visit that link, it's not the preview mode is what it would actually look like for the students. All right. I hope you found this to be helpful in how you make Google Sites a little more interactive for students.